together for our mayor, Richard Berry, City of Albuquerque. Come on, you can make your legs a little bit louder. There you go. And we have a performance by Mr. Hakeem Bellamy, followed by Reflections on the Dream, Dr. Joseph DeLeon, Vice President of Equity and Inclusion at UNL and in that order. Thank you. I love y'all too, thank you. Um, I'm really honored to be here today, uh, not just because of the occasion and all the distinguished guests up here on the roster, but because of you, because of you guys took the time to come out of your house today and uh, commemorate an action. And like the mayor asked you to do, I would ask you tomorrow, even though yesterday was a day of service, to, to engage in service tomorrow. Serve somebody you love, somebody you know, serve somebody you don't like, all right? Children, students, serve your parents for once, because they serve you all the time. So, so I have a five-year-old, I can say that. So, um, so I challenge you to do that. Tomorrow I get to share this poem at Amy Bill High School, and I get to work in lots of fantastic schools in the city. But I'm really a fan of Amy Bill because what they do tomorrow is they serve. And they have all the students come to school tomorrow instead of taking the day off, and then they uh, all go out and do community projects um, around Albuquerque. So, uh, they set a great example. And the piece that I wrote for them, I've been doing that for five years now, so every year I have to write another poem about Dr. King. And uh, fortunately, that guy is really deep, so there's a lot to write about. And in poem number five, what I'm sharing with you today, I chose to write about somebody who inspired him by the name of Mahatma Gandhi. So it's called From Mohandas K. Gandhi to Michael Luther King Jr. Michael, I'm sorry. It's not fair. At least I got to meet my grandchildren before my people turned on me. I should have told you that Satyagraha will get you killed. That your hugs and hope will end in an embrace of gunpowder. That one million people can beat one million bullets, but all it will take is one bullet to meet, beat you, Michael. We have more in common than our four children and our changed names. More than noble peace prize gossip, cold jail cell floors, and an oppressed underclass. More than Henry David Thoreau and cowards who are too afraid to die for anything calling us soft. I'm so sorry. I should have told you that civil disobedience requires civility. Civility that is very hard to find in the human race that swaddles its offspring in flag and pistol, one in the cradle and launches them off to war. I should have told you that all of our Waldens would be war zones, that we won't die of old age or tuberculosis like Henry, that nonviolent resistance ends differently for people with our color skin. There should have been another chapter for us. We both got our start in public transportation. Not the Montgomery bus boycott that put you on American television, but the day you were made to give up your seat on a bus. Hours after you won a speaking contest at the Negro Elk Society, and you didn't sit in the back. You stood in the aisle. The entire 90-mile trip home, where all the white passengers around you, including the one in your seat, were made to stare at your pride and your pain. You were 14. I was 24 when I was thrown off a train for refusing to leave the first class cabin in South Africa, beaten by a stagecoach driver for refusing to make room for a European passenger, that same genetic defect in humans that made them spit on and spear your precious Jesus King. I call it a negation of civilization. You called me John 10, 16, which reads, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. You called me great soul. You said Christ showed us the way, and Gandhi and India showed it could work, and I'm sorry that they are not all like you. Sorry that they will forget that I am Hindu and Muslim peace when they are looking for someone to bomb. That they will forget that you are a militant lover, the pacifist aggressive pastor, Monday through Sunday Christian when they are looking for someone to be. I preach Satya and Ahimsa, harvested riverbeds of salt from the faces of my brothers and sisters, while giving the finger to British law. You preached, 
Said if 1,000 are locked up, there should be 1,000 more waiting to fill their jail cells too. Said peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you the rest. Sorry to tell you how tired I was, how tired you looked at the end. How the press would ridicule you when your peaceful protests exploded into violence. How it would frustrate you in a way that fasting and praying could not cure. How you could give a darn about how it would hurt your image because what was really taxing was how it broke your heart. Martin, it's the same heaven for lawyers and martyrs. There is no caste there to separate those who give, live good lives from those who live good legends. You could have been just a good father, husband, pastor, instead of king. I could have practiced law, not dying for the cause. I should have told you the dirty little secret that death is the only way out of making a hypocrisy of ourselves, that I was on the brink, ready to duct tape the mouths of my fellow countrymen, bickering over India and Pakistan as the British smirked their way out, and you, you were running out of cheeks to turn. Sometimes murder is the only way to leave in peace, Martin. Hiram. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner, but I think you knew. For someone dead at half my age, you were always a quick study. And when you got back from India, you let me and the whole of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church know. On Palm Sunday, you said, God grant that we shall choose the highway, even if it will mean assassination, even if it will mean crucifixion. For by going this way, we will discover that death, death will be only the beginning of our influence.